So we need to um, understand what happened bef before we start painting. We need to understand what happened uh, with the color. As I said before, natural color uh, of the object usually found around the highlights. As it gets away from this area, uh, it all changes. It's getting darker, it's getting less vibrant, it's getting warmer, it's getting in somewhere colder. So there's a loads of things happening to the color and we need to reflect that. But what definitely is not happening to this color, it's not getting mixed with black, okay? Neither of these places has a black in it. It's dark brown in some places, it's even red in here. Uh, but, you know, like some, some uh, people, especially beginners, tend to create shadows by adding black into the mix, please. No, 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 we don't do that. It's bad practice. Now, uh, more scrap uh, paper. Let's see what actually happens. Now, uh, where is my brush? Where is my brush? Oh, it's here. Sorry. Now, in here we can see vibrant, yellowish, orange, cool. So, orange, yellow, very nice, interesting colors. So, it's kind of like this. Maybe even yeah like that okay something happens if it's getting as i said colder we need to add tiny drop of blue it gets warmer we add some red in it okay so it's just very simple stuff if we get back to our color wheel and look at the position of our orange warmer this way colder this way complementary colors get it's the color less vibrant so if we need to achieve very dark shadow for the orange what we need to do is just add some blue in it that's it so we kind of have everything is different is just when we add different colors to it now how it's done in real life so we will be doing this all again all step by step i start with the light area with the minimum of changes to the uh, original color i will wipe my mixing clean and I will create a little sample of original color it's like this now it gets a little bit warmer like that so we have now two colors orange orange yellow it gets a little bit with the red in here tiny and something with the blue tiny drop of it right there so we've got four different samples how it's work yellow yellow red something like that and orange so essentially uh, what happens here is the uh, combination of these four different colors now from now on again I'm only working with the dry brush and using only material available for me from the palette at the moment okay so I'm starting to sampling and paint in a small uh, like a stains like this all around the um, highlights
I am applying this in, in random order, random shape, like a mosaic. These four colors I just created a minute ago. They are more clean, more vibrant, with the less addition of um, complementary color. warmer and also it's not as big something like this and immediately I need to soften this edges like so and here as well So that is my light. Now I'm gonna paint the rest of it with the orange color that's slightly uh, less vibrant by adding blue into it. So it gets a little bit shifted towards the um, brownish like and everything that I can see, the rest of it, I will paint with this color. Now I'm not so concerned about the um, uh, seams, you know, like if this was seamless, now I deliberately creating more kind of uh, spots or um, strokes of different density, slightly different color. By this, I'm starting to develop the that texture mm. this is also why I'm using um, stiff brush I don't bother with the as I go in the more shadowy areas I add into the uh, into the um, orange more blue mm, sorry too, too much see Jesus too much too much oh disaster oh my god <laughs> sorry now When I change size of my strokes, uh, direction of them, this will create in some places tiny overlaps between the strokes or stains. Uh, by that we kind of increasing density of the layers in this particular areas. And uh, that creates an extra roughness to helps to develop the texture see so right okay now I would like to create a little bit more bright areas around the this is what I do uh, quite important how it's done clean water wash your brush kind of dab it against the kitchen towel so it's still slightly wet but not soaking wet 
and from this we can start to wipe gently some bits Not much, but just a little bit. Here. It's supposed to be very, very soft. This no hard edge. Like that. It's okay for the beginning. Now I will do something with the stem. As you can see, it's kind of has a two colors. So that light, it's already we have it. Maybe I can add a tiny drop of um, uh, yellowish green to that. Just very light. Just to change this to something more like so. That particular piece will be loads of different like, stains along the stem, but we'll leave it at the moment. From now on, uh, what what I want to do with this pumpkin, uh, I'm going to analyze that the level of completion, what I've done. I have established the highlights, some of the light areas and the mid-tone, so kind of happy what I've done. Uh, but now I need to develop this uh, shadow, deep shadow um, areas. And they are nothing but orange again, mixed with um, um, need to keep watch that our colors always clean uh, orange cadmium orange mixed with the blue and uh, in some places red so this combination will create me uh, paint for the uh, shadowy areas within the um, pumpkin and they're quite dark to be honest so but this is how I'm doing this. I'm applying different color of the stains along, say, along this line. What I can see here, that edge, one edge of this is sharp because it all goes along this and very soft and it goes away. So that's what I need to establish. There is also some different imperfections within the shape, like a lines we need to show. Okay, so this is the other one. I'm constantly changing the color. One spot with the, say, brown, one with red. I hope you can see it.
and continue towards this. We might get back to all this um, um, areas once again, but at this stage, this is as far as I want to go. just softening them up. Since I'm working with layers, I'm kind of, I, I can see what's going to happen in the future with all this um, layers that I'm doing, you see. So different colors, shades. Also, as you can see, when I'm applying all these stains, I deliberately missing some uh, like a dots inside them, see like a bright spots. These are actually part of the texture. You can see them tiny light dots. Okay, this is what I'm doing. So when I'm forming the stain, I'm deliberately leaving some blanks. And as I go further and further, it will be more and more and more and more of them. Mm -hmm. it to dry and now I can pay attention to my as like I said uh, my pumpkin that I'm painting reference picture is much darker than the one that appears on the screen but value of the one that I'm doing I think it's pretty you know good good much isn't it yeah I think so so but if you wish, if you would like to make it slightly brighter, more yellowish, so the, the picture that it's on the screen, maybe, you know, be better for you. You see, you, you always will be your own mm, judge of the, your mixes, uh, the amount of value you're applying. It's important. You only the person who actually going to do this. Now, green. Green goes with some amount of red, and there will be different types of green. Now, the stem. 
So stem is a combination of loads of different stains like this. One, two, and uh, some of them darker, some of them lighter, but then loads of breaks between them. Uh, don't be afraid to include even um, strange colors, you know, odd colors. You will never be wrong with this, especially if you use the colors or paints that are already in the picture. Even some bits of orange. I will leave it. We'll go back to this later. Now we're going to do something with um, the shadow. Again, some orange, tiny drop of blue until it gets gray. Mm. As you can see, that shadow under the pumpkin is actually darker than the pumpkin, isn't it? So we need to use that. To depict. While it's wet, I'm using my dry brush to make edges softer. Okay. Also, you see this line? I will also soften this line as well. What often uh, gets overlooked is the value of that bead here. If you look at this, shadow is darker than the area on the pumpkin. Pumpkin, right? So pumpkin is brighter. It's obvious. But even though the, the shadow is darker here, pumpkin there is darker than the shadow. Okay? It has to be preserved, this uh, relation between the shadow and the light like this. I'm gonna give it a little little dry. Now a little trick. All the paints that I'm using are absolutely transparent. And see, uh, I will use that quality right now to create uh, the kind of shape on the stem. We can see it as cylindrical. At this moment, it's kind of um, flat anyway. So I need to create the shadow somewhere there. And the trick is I need to preserve the texture. But it will be preserved, whatever I do, if, if in a, even if I apply some darker uh, paint here, the, you know, the difference will remain the same. I'll show you now. So I'll get that dark color like this. And I will make this darker here. As you can see, the texture remains the same, but we've managed to create some sort of uh, shape effect. Okay, it gets darker there. We get back to this at later stage, definitely. And that effect will increase. Okay, now leave this leave shadow, 
go back to the texture and the shape on the pumpkin again so I don't change any colors that I use here again orange uh, bits of red red I'm using is um, mm, deep red um, rose mother it could be carmine or crimson doesn't matter doesn't really matter trust me on this one maybe darker colder brown colors now okay because some shadows there deeper so the um, main idea is here is to build up uh, density of the shadows gradually with the consecutive uh, up applying of the layers um, any kind of um, stains okay so I'd like to see the clean overlap all of them it's helps a lot to develop the texture especially on on the items that have um, complex uneven textures like this one here Don't be afraid of overdoing, I mean, slightly overdo uh, the darkness, you know, get more value into it. Hmm. Should be fine. Make sure you're using loads of different shades so that your color is not boring. That, to me, like I think that's very important. Drops of yellow, orange. This moment is just purely mechanical job, uh, applying layer after layer after after layer. Not in, it's not. It's less artistic, I think. And imagine if you need to produce the same picture many times mm. not everybody likes it due 
to the nature of my activities I used to do loads of you know similar pictures because of the some courses repeating themselves from you know time to time but okay when the object gets darker obviously everything environment is changing and I can see that my shadow needs improvement in other words more darkness directly under the pumpkin you see I'm not using any browns I'm not using any blacks because I'm making them myself At this stage, uh, we can see the, the more and more developed, but uh, there is obvious lack of darker, you know, colors in some areas. For instance, along these lines, right? So it's absolutely obvious to me. Yeah? This is what I'm going to do. Improve it. Blue. Also very simple trick if you would like to make something darker you can make it to in two ways well basically make it darker or may I make uh, area next to it slightly lighter The style I, I'm kind of using this is, to me, it's very, very loose. Um, it just, um, I think it will be easier for you to get used to the way I'm doing things. So that in the future, uh, Uh, future challenges, future pictures. Say, for instance, this one uh, is done in one sitting, actually. So I just uh, from the scratch, you know, and I just I can't see any reason to you know spend loads of time on it. It just doesn't make any sense. Uh, but in the future, uh, I should be able to spend more time on a more complex subject than I will be doing during the um, uh, extended period of time. Maybe one day I will do one part, but you know, it has to go through the some sort of um, increase of complexity, surely. Maybe 
steel as you can see uh, not enough there not enough there mm. Very often we face in the question when to stop. That could be going like forever. Um, many of you know exactly what I mean. It's just you always find something to improve, and so we need to find that point when where we can stop. And I am very, very close to it. It's cut like. Yeah. Because I am. It's still be a little bit sketchy anyway. Unfortunate, I don't know if it's unfortunate. What is it I wanted to say? find some light bright places missing I can improve this with just wiping a little bit okay a bit of dry. Try, 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 and then a few small details, and I'll be over. I will mix orange, blue, and red for the deep shadows.
Okay. So I I'd say I will be. Let me see. Yeah, good enough. So to wrap it up, uh, the most important thing here that we um, uh, talk about is the um, learning uh, working procedure here where we start how we move uh, along from one task to another we learn some basic how to um, mix the colors uh, of course as we go through the whole this challenges and the further we will learn more and more and more interesting stuff everything getting only more complex so i hope you like this and uh, of course any comments um, always welcome so please don't be shy ask me you can ask me in the group in the on the youtube when this video will be posted and don't forget when you finish your work uh, subscribe to my channel uh send it uh, to with the hashtags september art challenge monthly art challenge to our group or you can send it uh, to my email address which will be uh, displayed on the screen and i will put it on the website so as i said price for the uh, first price for september uh, it's a set of the brushes them really really nice brushes the uh, i use them myself this one is very good uh, I, I i'm sure you it, it will help you a lot to improve your techniques and stuff it's just i know how hard to find good brushes okay so i don't want to do anything with this except for the perhaps uh, final touch um you know what i do I, I will cheat I will make a frame oh my god no 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 maybe something I will take this off Brushes. I will show you a tiny thing that really really all of us should do when you finish your picture so when the picture is done Put it away where is my eraser i will get rid of this normally normal people not me will use a ruler i will use something else say like this and i will create a um, tiny frame around the picture like this so little bit for presentation of your work whatever you're painting whatever you're doing if you're even not happy with this go the full way I mean as if it's like always finish it to a level that it will be considered final picture and signature Two thousand twenty-two. so here we go it's finished uh, I will wish you good luck I would like to see loads of nice pictures from you um, this is it I'm waiting for your comments likes dislikes whatever anything is acceptable. Thank you very much.